trades here from Pop Turnus Pinto, Anastasia Phillips, and Jesse Camacho about the trades, which is going to be premiering on Crave March 22nd. Thank you both for your time. It's good to see you both again. Great to be here. Good to see you as always, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is exciting. I remember when this show was announced and we finally have a release date. Anastasia, I just want to know, you know, one of the coolest things about working in TV and film is you get to dive into worlds that maybe audiences are not much, like maybe familiar with. And, you know, this takes place in a refinery. Like, What's that like kind of working on a show like this and being able to kind of show a world that people might not be familiar with? It's a huge... Um... Uh, learning curve and it's also really exciting for me because it means that I get to learn about an area that I knew nothing about. I went when I got the job I drove to Sarnia to hang out with Ryan Lindsay's family and see all the um, the different setups the refinery meet the trades guys and like I you know I lived I grew up in Toronto I didn't really get exposed to a lot of that but there is um uh, so many people involved in these communities in the trades, and it was super cool to see it for the first time. And to add to that, Jesse, what was your, like, when you kind of had the this idea of the opportunity to work on a show like this, was that kind of similar mm -hmm. kind of thoughts about kind of diving into the trades and kind of making sure that, like, you know, you do it justice? Like, what was that mindset like? Yeah, no, I mean, not to piggyback too much uh, off of Stacey's answer, but yeah, I mean, that was kind of, pretty much it right is when we got cast and ryan was so helpful our showrunner you know he sent me like all these podcasts and these interviews he had done with trades people because yeah it was a world that i wasn't you know overly familiar with um but one that was kind of so rewarding and fun to explore and it's such an eclectic uh, group of people you know from all walks of life who come together um at this place and i really think it's something that hasn't really been explored a ton uh, and I think the show has a really, really fun way of delving into it. Um, and I was just really excited to try something new and learn something new and, you know, get, get out of my comfort zone in a really fun, creative way. I'm interested to know about like how the script, like the episodes read like on script, because I feel like it's interesting. You, you, you read it on the page and you go film it and there's a lot that kind of happens in between. So Anastasia, like, what's that like reading the first couple of episodes? Like how, what, did, how did it read specifically? Uh, to me, it read like what I loved about it is that it was really honest and kind of grounded, even though the humor is ridiculous and it is, and it's all based on the truth. Um, you know, but these are, these are real stories. So there's real people behind them and uh, the heart and the kind of grit of it and the raw, you know, glimpse into working class life, which, um, you know, comes with a lot of wealth as well. It's not like it's such a rich world in friendship, in family, in even like material gains. Um, you know, tradespeople are so well compensated. I had no idea. I was like, I might become a carpenter. Um, <laughs> totally. <yeah. laughs> but uh, so I, I, I thought, gosh, there's like a lot of funny sitcom-y half hour comedy here, but there's also a lot of truth and it's all um, mined from like uh, the real the real experience. Ryan grew up in this world, his whole family's in the trades. It's the like fishbowl he'd been swimming in until he was 17. And uh, yeah, so I, I wanted to do it as an actor that approaches all material looking for the truth and looking for a way to make it as um, grounded as possible. And, you know, similar question, Jesse, about kind of how the script reads, but I want to know focus more on like the ensemble cast because yeah. there's all these amazing kind of quirky characters in this. So what was it like kind of diving in and kind of meeting all these characters on the script for the first time? Well, that's the thing, right? It was like very different experiences. The first time reading it, I was like, God, this is like really, really funny. Uh, and then I remember very, very clearly that, that first read through we did, I think we read the entire season, like basically when we got there and I was so intimidated by the room, by the cast. And, you know, I think I expressed later on the cast, we all went away for a cottage weekend that Stacey organized for us um, near the end of production. And I, I said, I was like, I literally thought I was like, there's no way I'm making it to camera. I'm going to get fired. I'm not nearly as funny as all these people <laughs> like um. And I, I, when I read the script, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then that read through was like explosively funny. And then on set, you find new beats and other stuff. And it is just so honest in, you know, Ryan's experiences, whether it's his or, you know, his siblings or his friends. 
Um, and that really came through. And I think the whole cast was so game to really um, to, to get that authenticity. The trailer is making its rounds and, you know, we don't want to go into big spoilers, but we know that, you know, as Asia, there might be, there's, there's, there's a hot tub, right? There's a hot tub. Yeah, there's a hot <laughs> tub. There's, there's sensitivity. <laughs> Jesse, there's a sensitivity training apparently. There, oh, yeah. it was the oh. smallest hot tub. Let me just say the smallest hot tub I've ever been in. And yeah. then when I got in, the seat was so low that like my chin was underwater. <laughs> Not to mention my scene partner can't speak. So like, <laughs> and then of course I'm in a bathing suit, which I don't think any like woman loves doing in the first introductory scene of a show. So I was like, here we go. And they don't tell you much, right? Like that, that cause like that, I was talking to Jesse too. There's a scene where, you know, Jesse's in the car, does like a spit take with, with his coffee or whatever. Mm -hmm. What was that? Was that coffee? Uh, I, I think I think it might have been um, one of uh, Homer's energy drinks. Okay, which you know was which not to give away industry secrets was water, or else I would have been exploding all day every day because <laughs> you rarely see Homer without an energy drink in his hand, and uh, I would be dead. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was uh, an energy drink. I believe that is also without saying specifically when that's early in the run. So you should see that. I think. Well, it's interesting Fairly because early. they're, they're playing that, that same clip like many mm -hmm. times on, on TV. And like, it's just like, you didn't know that they were going to probably put that, that stuff in there. Right. Like no. you just wait and then <laughs> you find out from someone, right. Anastasia. Like... Yeah, it's true. It's true. You never know what they're going to show. You never know. I can't wait for people to check it out because it looks amazing. Um, Rob Wells, I mean, the guy's the guy's a, the guy's a legend. Like, let's be honest, like the guy's yeah. amazing. And I just kind of wanted to hear from both of you, just start with you. Like, what was it like kind of working with Rob on this? Well, I had worked with Rob on Bandits, yeah. and uh, I think we got along really, really well. Uh, I thought he was he was so good in that. And uh, you know, when this started coming around, you know, he kind of reached out to me saying that there was a show that he was involved in that was casting, and you know, to to look out for it and. So, you know, when I when I sent in a tape, I was like really hoping it would work out and luckily it did. And, you know, Rob is, he's such a great, like he leads by example in such a great way. Like he worked so hard and I think he, he was a great leader for the cast. He's such a kind, generous, funny guy. Like I would, you know, I would uh, lay down in traffic for Rob Wells, not to get, to, <laughs> not to get too dark, I guess. But uh, I, I love Rob and, you know, we got to spend some time with him and his wife and his, we met his family and they're all so kind. He was extremely welcoming, uh, made himself available for all of us all the time. A great scene partner, so prepared. And I think he's going to impress a lot of people. I mean, he's already shown that he's a versatile performer, but in this one, he gets to show, uh, you know, a lot of different shades to mm. what he can do. And I thought he just knocked it out of the park. And Anastasia, you have scenes of everyone in the show, but you have a lot of scenes with Rob in this, right? So I just kind of want to know what were those scenes like too, the ones where it was just both of you specifically? Amazing. I mean, his comedic timing is impeccable. He always plays the truth. He is so open. Um, I mean, you couldn't really ask for a better scene partner or castmate or sort of leader. I mean, he very much led the... Um, atmosphere on the set the working environment and he's such a like diplomatic kind awesome guy and yeah. so mm -hmm. um you know the ripple effect from that is felt throughout the whole production and every level of yeah. it um yeah like i just i just i was just always looking forward to those days when we had scenes together he has technically not been on this show because i've interviewed ricky from the trailer park boys <laughs> i have not interviewed <laughs> Rob Wells. So funny. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. It's funny. So funny. Yeah, it was like I did an interview with them with Ricky Bubbles and Julian all in character. And it was like one of the most fun I've ever had in an interview. Those guys are hilarious. It was yeah. so, fun so fun because it felt like I was in an episode of the trailer park boys. Yeah. yeah it was so, so cool for the show. Um another cool thing that I like doing is, you know, both of you spent a lot of time together on 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 the set in Nova Scotia and everything. And there's a lot of cool things, a lot of cool stories. Might be some kind of different kind of journeys because there's some scenes that you did Anastasia where maybe Jesse was off or vice versa or anything. I want you both to ask each other a question about your kind of experience on set or a certain thing about the, maybe you didn't know about the character. Like, do you have anything on top of your mind specifically? Whoever asks mm. it first can can go first. Mm. Um. Okay. I got. I. I might. I might have one. Um, this is kind of like goes um, a little outside the confines of our show too. 
Um, now, Anastasia, you've uh, been in Halifax shooting several different shows. Um, I would say, like, I know that your experience on both were really good. What would you say were kind of the fun key differences between shooting this and shooting Moonshine? Mm, that's a good question. Oh, well... I think this is a, so the trades, just in terms of the cast, the cast is a little bit <clears throat> older. Yeah. It's right. a lot more um, male dominant. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is a lot more um, like the, the comedy is a little bit more bumped up and emphasized in the mm -hmm. trades. Moonshine was a dramedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say that like in terms of just like the way that the sets operated, like <laughs> Moonshine, I always said Moonshine felt like we were in a kindergarten room and like the teachers left and it's just like mm -hmm. mayhem. And I'm a little mm -hmm. bit more introverted person than an extroverted person. And so those days I found to be like challenging sometimes. Okay. Whereas in the trades, although we were, you know, making a lot of, like crass jokes and we mm -hmm. had parade scenes that seemed to like they would be sort of uh really chaotic and an introverted person's nightmare to shoot i always felt everyone was so like grounded and even keel and self-regulating and awesome and so mm -hmm. in some ways it was uh like a really really like stable safe working environment and i really appreciated that um nice. yeah That's yeah great. i hope i that's Great a good answer. one. Do you have a question for Jesse? Um, yes. When you, okay. how do you approach half hour comedy differently to other projects? And is there a difference? Are you thinking about hitting the joke? And how mm. do you find your way through it? Oh my goodness. It's a great question. Well, it's a great question. Um, well, I, I think that, you know, there are similarities and there are differences, obviously. Um, I think what I learned, especially on this one, where I think that I sort of went into it, um, I think in most of my career, I, I feel like I've played kind of, uh, you know, the straight man, meaning the, you know, the one without the jokes, the setup person, I, I like to say. Um, so I think I went into Homer, who I think is, the character is pretty joke heavy. I was kind of nervous. And I think at the beginning, uh, at the read through and in my first tape, I, I really was hitting those jokes. And it was our great director, Warren Snow and Ryan Lindsay a little bit too, who were very gently saying like, you know, just do what you always do, play it honest, play it real. And the jokes will come. And that is, was really a big kind of discovery for me was, oh, wow. Just because, you know, the character might be a little more eccentric or wacky doesn't necessarily mean I need to push it. I think there are, projects you know three camera sitcoms or whatever where maybe that is a little elevation is needed but i think in the trades kind of almost the more somewhat grounded the better because it is based on real people and you know real experiences so i think for this specific one it ended up actually being closer to you know what i would i guess tackle any kind of thing in that's uh, more grounded but uh, i don't think that's the general rule for all you know sitcoms or anything like that um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I would say, yeah, I went in with almost a different approach and went, oh, I, I don't know if this is actually right. Like, I think, I think Warren's correct. It's just like kind of approach this one as I would any other, because this is a more grounded sort of take on it. You know, and I think a great example of that is someone like Dan, who, you know, plays backwoods, who, you know, is this kind of very eccentric, as Dan would say, you know, he's a hick from the sticks. Uh, and Dan comes in and just plays it perfectly straight as himself. And he's such an extravagant, fun, big personality that it just jumps off the screen and it's just perfect. So I think it's obviously a case by case basis. But uh, for this one, I realized I just go in and, you know, find the, you know, the honesty in it as much as I could. Both great questions. You guys should, both of you should host the show now. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> See yourself out, Peter. I'm just going to leave. Uh, March 22nd yeah. on Crave, the trades. I mean, is it, oh, it's always going to be a weird feeling, right? When like you make something, you wait, you wait, and then like the, like Canada's going to be able to see it. Like it's never not going to be weird, right? <sighs> it's never not weird. <laughs> it's never not weird. I don't love watching myself, but I, I can't not look. And also I want to celebrate all the work that everyone else has yep. done. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm extremely excited to see it. I'm nervous. Um, also, so much time has passed that like, it feels almost like a, a world away. Um, yeah, Jesse, you've seen what, what we've done in ADR, right? Yeah, basically what we've done in ADR. Uh, I'm really excited for people to see it too. I feel kind of the same way. I feel like when I was, you know, a kid, I always loved watching myself and now I'm like the opposite, but same thing. I can't really look away. I'm excited to see it. I think it really is like, you know, not to get too worldly about it. I do think it's the kind of show that can bring people together because I think it really kind of celebrates people on, you know, every side of the spectrum on everything. And I think, you know, uh, that's something that I think is needed right now. It could be really fun. And I think the show does it in such a kind of natural, grounded, fun way. I think people are going to have a great time watching together, whether it's, you know, with your friends or your family, like, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see it. Everything I've seen so far has been really fun and funny. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous too, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. March 22nd on Crave the Trades. It was so great to see you both again. Thank you both so much for your time. Thanks for having us. Nice to see you, Jesse. Nice to see you too. And uh, I'll see you soon, hopefully. And Peter, I'll probably talk to you within the next hour or so. <laughs> There's a good chance. Because um, we you're, talk every day. You're, yes, we do. You're, <laughs> I think, remember we did like a lock and key interview. We got up and I was like, welcome to the show. And we were like, you were like, thanks for having me. And we were kind of like, are we going to pretend like we like we don't... haven't spoken already today? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's great. Um, no, both of you are, are so good at what you do. And, you know, I have to tell you all honestly, to just to get a little serious for a second. I mean, times are tough. And both of you have worked on a lot of, you know, cool TV shows that have meant a lot for a lot of people going through a lot of tough times. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting because I, I I don't think you think about it a lot because the, the actor life is very kind of like you like not on to the next, but you work on something. People love it. You meet someone and you're like, oh, wow, thank you. That's amazing. And then you don't think of it much. But you provide an escape for people when they really, really need it. And I think that's really, really cool. So I just wanted to kind of say thank you to both of you in that regards. That's so thank kind. you, buddy. Yeah, that's absolutely. So, yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You can, of course, catch Anastasia Phillips and Jessica Camacho in The Trade. It's going to be premiering on Crave March 22nd. Until next time, this is Anastasia, Jesse, and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn it Dip. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.